ba da ba ba ba. You waited like right until I clicked record for that, didn't you? I did. Well, it's staying in now, and welcome to the fourth podcast for Fur Talk. I am Blake Fox. I'm Relaine Siston. And I'm Mizu Korai. I like how everyone else had like a big old epic intro thing, and I'm just like, hey, what's up? I don't know. I just felt like it. <laughs> and oh, I just worked had to go with the flow. He's he's filling out them vibes, going with going with the motions. Ooh. Ooh. <clears throat> Motion. So, what is that game that you're wanting to play again? Oh, Pokemon Insurgents. Insurgents, yeah. That's one of the fan-made ones, right? Yep. It certainly sounds like a fan-made one. What's that one like? What's like, what did they change? Well, they end up introducing this idea that the Pokemon card game ended up having called Delta Species. The fuck is Delta Species? Well, in the card game, they were Pokemon that ended up having different types than what they'd normally have. For example... Although it still looked like a normal Charmander, the Charmander would be water types. Okay, so, so it's kind of like what the Aloha thing does, only instead of changing their appearance, they still look the same? Pretty much. Ah, that's nifty, I guess. And so does it change all of the Pokemon types, or are they just now Delta Pokemon as well as regular Pokemon? There are some Delta Pokemon as well as regular ones. Alright, that's kind of cool. It could make for a fun like game idea, especially for a fan-made like Pokemon interpretation. I think yeah. you were trying to say something a second ago, weren't you? Was I? I forget. I don't know. It seemed like you were about to say something and then we kept going. I don't <clears> know. <throat> Must have forgot. Must not have been important. It's dead now. Hey, weren't you wanting to say a thing about a magazine? Oh, yes. Like, this isn't going to be as political as it sounds, but like... So, like, I saw this issue of Globe Magazine on our, on our rack at, like, Walgreens while I was at work, and I was like, eh, might as might as well give it a look, because, like, they had, like, Nostradamus on the front cover, and I'm like, ooh, people are always entertainingly stupid whenever they reference Nostradamus. So, like, <laughs> I open it up. I, I find that article, and it's like, you know, it was the usual globe fluff, except for that it also, like, stated that, like, Donald Trump was going to start World War III, and I was like, oh, they may or may not have been bashing Donald Trump. That's kind of new for Globe. Yeah, most of those magazines are very pro-Trump. <clears throat> He's actually friends with the guy who runs the National Enquirer, I think. Yeah. Like, that's like a personal friend of his, which is why they're always attacking everyone who is against Donald Trump. But more interestingly, on the way on the way to that article, I saw this advertisement for... I saw this advertisement for this, like, 10-inch tall uh, resin sculpture of St. Michael. And, like, I may be agnostic, but that sculpture looks fucking badass. Like, it was, like, Michael, like, carrying, like, this giant sword, wearing, like, this glittering golden armor with, like, these two giant wings, like, sprouting on his back... Standing over a slain dragon, like it looks Wait, fucking. Hold on, hold on. Why the f was there a dragon? Oh, because like <laughs> in the uh, in the Bible, like Saint Michael defeated the metaphorical dragon of like various sins and stuff, and like that got reinterpreted as him defeating a literal dragon. Um, I don't remember that part, but maybe it was in there. I don't know. I don't remember anything about dragons in the Booble. But like it looked fucking, it, like the the statue itself looked fucking badass, and like. If we, if we ever get there, like, when that magazine's still there, I'm totally going to show you it. But, right. like, I would totally buy it and, like, use, use it as a D&D game piece. If it weren't $70, that was likely going to an organization I would never support. That's fair enough. It's like I always say, though, whenever it comes to, like, all of the Christian stuff, like, especially with the Christian music and movies, they always pick, like, the really boring, uninteresting stuff. If you made a movie or a song about fucking Samson, I'd watch the shit out of that. Yes. Like, I don't even care. Like, I, I don't even believe. Yeah, but I would watch it because... Is that having his hair get cut off or whatever? Uh, yeah, that's, how, like, the source of his strength is his hair. But in the story, he beats a bunch of people to death with the jawbone of an ass. And he, like, goes around doing all kinds of, like, really cool metal shit, like, all the time. You could totally write, like, a Christian metal song about that guy, and it'd probably be really awesome. Yeah. Because <laughs> he just, like, goes around, like, fucking shit up. That's what he does. That's his life. <laughs> and at the end of his story, like, after he gets his hair cut off and he loses all his powers, they, like, strap him to these fucking pillars. And he's all like, hey, God, I know, like, you made those rules about my hand shit, but if you could, like, give me strength one more time, I could, like, so fuck these guys up. And God's like, sounds good, homie. I got you. And then he's like, raw, and he rips the pillars like off the thing and sends the whole building down on top of himself and everyone else. And nice. kills like everyone, including himself. Nice. <laughs> Rip. That's like Samson, dude. Yep. Like he's a cool character. Like I don't know why 
the Christian people don't utilize him more because he's actually awesome. Yeah. He's like probably the most awesome character in the whole book. The, the Old Testament was metal <laughs> as fuck. Hell, even Jesus did some pretty metal ass things. Jesus was definitely champion and not giving a fuck. Like, people did all kinds of terrible shit to him. And he's like, it's whatever, bro. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We're just gonna stab you with this spear and hang you on this stick forever until you're dead. And he's like, it's cool, bro. Whatever, do what you gotta do. Uh, <laughs> I still find, like, one of the more hilarious stories being, like, the only time, like, Jesus actually freaked out was, like, when he went into a temple and, like, people were selling shit. And he was like, <laughs> no! He just, yeah. like, flips over all the tables, like, tells everyone to get out. Yeah. <laughs> the only time he ever gets angry in the whole thing. But I guess it doesn't count because, uh, he got mad for good reasons. Long, long story short, <laughs> Old Testament's metal as fuck. Well, well, that was a fun story. <laughs> Who's excited for Halloween, which is just around the corner now? This uh, is Halloween, this is Halloween. If, I, Halloween, if I'd let my hair grow out... If I'd let my hair grow out a little more, I would totally go to go out like not not really trick or treating, but just like go out walking around the town dressed as CM Punk. If I had an eye patch and the proper clothes, I would just be Big Boss. Yes. <laughs> more specifically, I'd be Punished Venom Snake because my hair tied in a ponytail is pretty much the same hair anyways. Yeah. I would totally do it. I would be Punished Venom Snake for Halloween. It'd be fun. Oh man! And then not everyone really. would. Nobody would even know who I was, and that make it more fun. Not really <laughs> Halloween related, but like one of these years, I need to like save up a shit ton of money, like go to MFF dressed as Robbie Rotten and start handing out free ice cream to everyone. <laughs> you told me this before, but yeah, that does sound fun. <laughs> That's like my idea. I wanted to go as the ice cream guy from Undertale and just give out <laughs> ice creams, <laughs> 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 like you know, little ice creams with like positive notes attached to them. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a fun idea now. Getting a fursuit and buying a cosplay for the fursuit. <laughs> <laughs> fursuit cosplay? That'll be the new thing. Now that we suggested it, it'll take off and become really popular. Except we suggested it so no one will ever even hear it in the first place. <laughs> People will retroactively find it eventually when we become popular. Eventually. It'll happen, I tell ya. Oh, uh, as long as we keep a consistent posting schedule, which, speaking of which, I'm actually changing our uh, schedule. I'm going to move us to a Monday to Friday schedule from now on. So that way we only have to do five instead of seven videos. And I'm going to stop doing crazy editing on the podcast because it just takes way too long. Maybe in the future when we build up like a giant backlog of videos, I'll start doing more involved uh, editing with the podcast again. But for now, it's just going to be um, a much better idea to not do that. I like slightly bumped the table just a second ago, and now you can see that giant audio spike from where the table bumps slightly. Yeah, that's like the third one this recording. Yeah, Work. I know. Luckily, Work. they don't... The podcast, it's never been a big deal in the podcast for some reason. Like, they've never like heard anything too bad. Although, I'm planning on releasing the video today, the final Ori and the Blind Forest video, so before this goes up, people will have finally seen it, whoever's listening to this. And I want to apologize in advance, because there's like a very good chance that you're going to hear some like shitty audio because I screamed so loud I I may have destroyed the audio at several points. <laughs> I, I like how you say like you're going to apologize in advance when they're not going to see this until after that video goes up. You have a point. <laughs> I may have fucked up. <laughs> I'm apologizing in anti-advance whatever in, in whatever that in, is uh, in retrospect in retrospect I guess whatever apologizing in retrospect I'm apologizing in hindsight <laughs> I'm going to get into my hindsight now <laughs> uh man the uh the, the Metal Gear Awesome reference counter will absolutely destroy you oh I know I love Metal Gear Awesome it's like one of my favorite things like, as much as I love Metal Gear, I also love the Metal Gear Awesome series, which is why it sucks that he never finished it. Yeah, like, and, how, how far did he get? He got to, like, the Mantis boss fight, which is about, like, that's about, like, halfway through the game, I think. Yeah, he was pretty close. It's just, he never did a third one, and he's definitely never doing a third one now. Yeah. Like, I mean, that ship has sailed and has been sailed for, like, five plus years at this point. Watch, like, before, just before he retires, he's going to release the rest of Metal Gear Awesome. <laughs> oh, God. I think he would make another Metal Gear Awesome if he ever wanted to make one, but he's, like, in a position in life at this point where he's not going to do anything he doesn't want to do because he doesn't have to. 
Which is a pretty good position to be in. Plus, all your stuff turns out way better whenever you actually want to do it. Exactly. That's kind of the philosophy I've been following, and exactly why I've not been really, like, doing any sort of editing. Yeah, but you still need to do editing. Like, like it's been forever. Like, something's got to, you know, be done on the Yugo thing. I mean, Mizu recorded that freaking like, three weeks ago, and... Like, still nothing's come of it. He'd probably like to see his videos up so that I'm not the only one on videos. <laughs> That's why I want to do the whole Pokemon Insurgents game thing. Yeah, I know. We'll have to play that either. You don't work tomorrow, right? Nope. All right. I don't even work until, like, 5 o'clock today, so... Well, I was going to say we can... Well, I guess we were going to do video recording anyways. We can go ahead and do your game instead. Um... Oops. Because tomorrow I was thinking we could finally do the hair dye thing because we both wanted to do that. I need to do mine. Mine's all faded out now. It looks like shit. It ain't fixed. And then you just actually want to do yours for the first time ever. Woo! For the first time. In forever? Where the hell did he go? I'm getting some headache pills. Oh, okay. He's getting headache pills in case you didn't hear that on your end. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, we don't give a shit. That's true, too. I wish I knew how, like, you get the audio to sound uh, like you're in the same room as somebody. Because, like, if you notice, like, on really popular, like, really well done channels, um, like, whenever they do audio, it doesn't, it, it almost sounds like they could be in the same room as you. It's, like, believably close. That's just a really, really, really good microphone. Do you think it's just a good mic? I don't well, know. I'm it's just a combination going. of a really, really, really good microphone and like years and years of practice with audio editing. Yeah, I guess that probably makes sense. Just because it'd be nice if we could not, because like ours is like really clean, really clear audio, but it also kind of sounds still like it's coming from the computer, which I think is a little distracting and could, if I knew how to make the audio better, I would. On the bright side, I finished intro. I made an intro for the first time ever. That was something. Mizu is not a huge fan. Brawl thought it was okay. I said uh, it was better than nothing. That's true, it is better than nothing. It is just a placeholder. <coughs> but I thought we had <coughs> <coughs> You okay? You're not gonna die? Dude, Ow. that fucking audio spike from where you coughed is ridiculous. I think I'll have to cut that out. <laughs> no, I'm gonna leave it in, just cause Ugh. it's gonna sound like <coughs> That's no. actually not a cough out of sickness, too. I just swallowed saliva down the wrong tube. Oh, I hate when that happens. But no, like, see how it was still blue? Like, that means it's fine. If the audio is going to be broken and, like, clippy, it'll be like this crazy wave-looking thing that's like this. Like, you'll see one when you see it. Probably not the best idea to take ibuprofen with, like, a shake, but fuck it. <laughs> milkshakes and pills. Milkshake, pills, and bacon in those milkshakes. <laughs> oh, God. Bacon shake. Bacon shake? Sponsored, not sponsored. It's better than bacon soap. <laughs> bacon soap. <laughs> bacon soap, isn't that actually a thing? No, nah, no, nah, it was a joke in Invader Sim. Oh, was it? I don't remember anymore. I just I remember. Made bacon soap. <laughs> oh, yeah. But fuck it. But fuck it. <laughs> Why are we all making Eminem references at the same time now? I was making, I a, I was making a Sega reference. Oh, wow. We're all making a different reference, but it's the same reference at the same time. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's a bunch of different references, but it's the same joke. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that happens, I guess. Speaking of Sega, I recently beat Bayonetta. Sweet. How was Bayonetta? I never got a chance to play it. It was really good. Like, really fun. Like, don't play it for the story. Like, the story is fairly decent, but, like, not worth the price of admission. But the gameplay? Holy fuck, the gameplay is awesome. I suck at it, but it is awesome. Yeah, isn't it supposed to be, like, very similar to Devil May Cry? Yeah. Essentially, yeah. That sounds fun. Sounds like a lot of fun. Speaking of which, I totally gotta play Devil May Cry. Not the, uh, not, not the reboot. Like, I played the reboot. The reboot sucks. Kind of. It was not very good from what I saw of you playing it. It looked like shit. Yeah. Plus, I don't like the, uh, Dante... He's oh yeah, like Dante. Douche. He's the he's very douchey in the new version. Dante. Not that not that he was anything amazing in the old version. He was still trying to be hip and cool in like the original version. Yeah, but yeah, there, I there totally got more of a I don't give a shit vibe. I, I totally got to play like the first four Devil May Cry games. 
I've played the first two. They're pretty good. I've heard, like, the first one is kind of the black sheep of the series, because, like, it's it, it's basically, like, pretty much r risen from the ashes of what was originally going to be Resident Evil 4. Yeah, I mean, they were going to make the Resident Evil game, and then something happened in production, and they wound up making Devil May Cry instead. Which, I mean, if you're going to have your game change from one game into a completely different game, you couldn't have gone much better than Devil May Cry. Yes. <laughs> Because that turned out to be an entirely new franchise that they could capitalize off of. Exactly. Oh, man. Oh, man? I say that too much. What the fuck? I need to stop saying oh, man. Oh, oh yes, man. Uh, it could be worse. could be me around, like, uh, middle school time. What did you do in middle school? Way oh, back in man. the middle oh, man. school oh, man. era. Oh, man, 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 Another thing I used to do was, like, bump into someone and immediately go, Sorry, 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 I'm so sorry. <laughs> well, at least you weren't a total, we total weave and we're going gum inside. <laughs> <laughs> you actually did that? No. Oh. I'm just saying it'd be funny if you did, though. <laughs> <laughs> I bet there was people who did. Because there's people who Naruto run. People who Naruto ran. Oh, man, ran. I, Nar I Naruto <laughs> run. People who Naruto, people who Naruto ran. ran. What? I, I always used to do the Naruto run around high school all the time. Yeah, that's what he, he used to do it at track is what high. he was telling me. In junior high. I never did the Naruto run, so I am I guess I'm the only one who's not a piece of shit. Well, hey, I mean, like, the Naruto run, like, looked better than what than that wimpy-ass run that I always used to do when I wasn't Naruto running. Like, I, I'd, like, do a run and, like, okay, maybe not that wimpy-ass, but... Oh my god, speaking of wimpy runs, do you remember the run at the end of the third Austin Powers movie? Whenever um, oh, Seth right. Green like, is turning into Dr. Evil, but then Dr. Evil turns good and he gets on mad and he runs off. Yeah. His like, legs kick back as he's running away. <laughs> yeah. No, it wasn't that wimpy either. It was more like uh, it was more uh, like the awkwardness that is the running animation in Final Fantasy XII. Like, where everyone's just like standing straight up, like not moving from standing straight up and just moving their legs and arms. <laughs> that sounds fun. I have to see what you're talking about later. Well, we but, do uh, have Final Fantasy XII, so I can show you that running animation. Uh, it sounds beautiful. Oh yeah, that's pretty much exactly beautiful. how I ran. I didn't do a super whole lot of running. <coughs> because I was lazy. I walked everywhere. Fuck running. Oh <laughs> uh, man, I was the... I still run. I think, like, the one thing I I regret, like, the one decision I regret, which I kind of don't regret, was ever getting a car. Like, on the one hand, it's good because, like, I got to travel really long distances. On the other hand, I got really fucking lazy ever since I got a car. Because, like, it was a, like, 15 to 20 minute commute to my school and back by car. And, like, the same way, like, to my work, to my place of work, like, in the opposite direction from my house. And I biked it. Every day it took me like forty-five minutes to get to school and to get to school. Forty-five minutes to get back. Forty minutes to get to work. Forty minutes to get back from work, and I did it all by bike. Nice. And it was a great way to stay in shape. And, and then it's I got a great way to stay in shape. Then I got a car and like drove everywhere, and then I got fat. See what I ended up doing was judging You're not distance. That fat. You just was... got a little bit of flub. <laughs> what I would do is I would judge distance and be like, is this? worth me just wasting gas. Yeah. And honestly, I should be just walking to work or, like, biking to work. Yeah, that wouldn't hurt if you uh, did more walking and biking. You could. I don't know why you don't. Because I'm lazy. I've gotten into the habit of walking on my days off. Although I need to... I need to fix my eating still. Which is why this week I'm going to actually do the thing and purchase salads and actually try to eat them and I'm probably going to hate my life. <laughs> oh, I don't want to do it, but at the same time I know I need to. So I'm just like, alright, it's time to stop being a little bitch. You gotta do this because like, your weight has hit that 200 mark and it's just kind of stayed stabilized there and like, it's not enough for me. Well, I don't know. 200 seems like a fairly decent... I've okay, got... yeah. Fair enough. I've still got, like, that going on. I need to get down to, like, 190, 185 or something. I'm like, guessing that's probably about where I need to be. You know, that's the second time I've reacted to something that's purely, like, visual and that no one listening to this podcast will ever get to see. Mm, they don't need to see my, my flabby belly. 
<laughs> it's not as flabby as your belly, but it's the little flabby. It's definitely Fair not enough. as flabby as it used to be. I was, I did lose a little weight. Fair enough. Just from walking and getting rid of soda, that helped a lot. But now I just need to swap out hot pockets with like salads and apples and grapes and shit. And I, at least the apples and grapes and shit will be good. Not hot pocket good, but good. Yeah, ripperoni, pepperoni, as some people say. Ripperoni, well done. Some people, they tell me, they say, Blake, you've got to try the salad. It's the best salad. The best salad that's ever been made. Absolutely the best, believe me. Oh, God. <laughs> if I could do, like, a Trump voice, I could definitely imitate him really well because, like, I know his hand motions, and I know the way he talks. I just can't actually mimic his voice. Oh boy. Hey, wow, that's the first time I've actually heard, like, that weird lisp I apparently <coughs> have outside lisp. of uh, the video recording. I have never heard that lisp. Yeah, yeah when you if, listen if you back... you watch his video recordings, you'll notice he has a lisp. Yeah. I mean, I know I have one because I've been told I have one, but I don't notice it either until I listen to myself through the recordings. Yeah, but, um, like, we played back the video recordings and we both noticed I have, like, this lisp. Like, it's really obvious whenever you hear it back in the video recordings. And now that I've noticed it, like, I can actually hear it now. It's weird. And that's going to annoy me. I'm going to annoy myself with my own talking. He's going to <laughs> fix his list. Never then, fix it. Then again, like, ever since, like, I've listened back to our podcasts a few times, I can't help but, like, hear myself as I actually sound rather than, like, the way I normally hear myself. It's weird, isn't it, whenever you hear how your voice actually is versus how you think it is? Yeah. It's like and such then, a like, weird experience. And then, like, after listening to it for so long, like, I eventually, like, start hearing it, like, as it actually is as I talk. Nice. Well, that'll help a lot if we actually can hear our actual voices as we record stuff, because then we'll know how we actually sound. But, oh my god, that's what help for impressions? super annoying. I'm actually annoying myself <laughs> with my own voice right now. <laughs> Wow. Oh, wow. It's funny is that it's probably, like, mostly in my head now, and, like, I'm playing it up more than it really is in my head, and it's actually not even that bad. But because I can hear it, it like, it's bugging me. Now to say that thing I say that I'm getting annoyed at myself for saying, Oh, boy. <laughs> Have a boy. Have a boy. <laughs> yes. I, well, now we've I'm made gonna... references to Oni Plays. Oh, wait, that's an actual... <laughs> that's actually an Only Plays reference? Yeah, that's an Only Plays reference. Have a boy. <laughs> Got, gotta, like... Got, gotta, like, go to a baby shower, and instead of, like, putting up a sign that says, It's a boy, just put up a sign that says, Have a boy. That's better than in BoJack, whenever he has the uh, balloon for the little baby, and it says, It's a boy on it, but the OY is scribbled out, and it says, Aborted. Like, it's hastily <laughs> written on there. <laughs> What? It's aborted. Because <laughs> he's like, he's trying to be really supportive and he doesn't know how to be supportive of an abortion. So he gets a baby balloon and just writes aborted on it. Well then. <laughs> I think we uh, lost Amizu. I fucking love that show so much. It's great. We did lose a Mizu. Well, I think he just went to the bathroom, though. We're one Mizu short. I mean, he did leave his laptop behind. That's true. He has the best computer in this house, and that's my fault because I bought it. <laughs> well, we do have this PC. We do have this PC, but his laptop's better than the PC. Is it? Yeah. It's got way better specs than our PC. Nice. Other than probably the graphics card now, because we got that really good graphics card, and his probably just has onboard graphics. I'm guessing, although it was able to play Skyrim just fine, so it must be at least decent. Well, then again, my laptop can play Skyrim just fine, though you have to turn off the shadows. But yeah, he's got like um, an i5, and I think we have an i3, and he's got like more RAM and stuff. Like, he's, a lot of the specs on his computer are way better than the one on the PC. The only thing is that we can upgrade the PC as we go, and his laptop is always as good as it is now. So, like, we can make the PC better over time. Plus, he won't have the best computer in the house for long, because when Cyber Monday comes around, I'm gonna buy a computer for really cheap. Because mine is super dead. Remember? I destroyed yep. it. I dismantled it by hand to steal the so hard drive and the piece of RAM out of it. 
Yep. A piece of RAM I'm probably never even going to use. Got to gotta download more RAM. Got to delete System32 so you can download more RAM. I don't know what to do with that piece of RAM, actually. I don't want to just, like, get rid of it because it's probably still useful. Just I'm I sure can't we can use find it. Some, I'm sure we can find some way to install it on this PC. I don't think so. I don't think it'll work like that. Plus, all that stuff has to be compatible. I might just end up getting rid of it anyways. But I'm keeping the hard drive. And that might come in handy later. Plus, it's got a bunch of stuff on it still that I need. Not a lot of stuff, but a little bit of stuff. My poor five-year-old laptop, it, it lived a good life, but it had, to, it had to finally be put down. And by put down, I ripped it apart brutally and... Is that the fact it was already ripping apart itself? Had to, yeah, it was breaking to, apart on its own, so it wasn't like I too, did too much damage to it. Had to, had to put it down. It was a mercy killing. I, I mercifully laid it down and beat it to death with a shoe. <laughs> that would have been funny. It was a mercy killing that took three hours. <laughs> Well, at least it wasn't the Kinosaji. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> it wasn't the what? The Ginosaji. The Ginosaji. I'll, I'll have to show you that video, but it's basically the uh, the painfully slow murderer with a horribly inefficient weapon. Is that the stupid video with the guy that goes around beating that one here with a spoon? Yes. yes. That's the, the spoon video, oh, yes. Oh, God. That video is old, but I fucking love that video. Yes. Did you ever see the follow-up video? I did. There's a follow-up video. It's like 30 minutes long. No, not the 30 minute long one. There's a really short one where he, um... All the, all the people in the comments kept telling him to try a spoon to kill the Kinosaji with. And he made a short video where he, like, comes after it with a spoon. <laughs> and, like, he hits it and then the spoon just kind of bounces off of it. And then he's like, oh, well, shit. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty funny. I do like... Is it in the original video that he's trying to kill it with the tank, or is that in the follow-up videos? I think that must have been in the follow-up video, because I remember in the original video, I think, like, the most he tried to kill it with was a minigun. I'm trying to remember, because I feel like at one point he tried to tank and it didn't work. I wonder if that guy even still makes videos. Maybe. I don't know. Worth checking out. We'll have to look into that at some point, because that guy was actually pretty funny. At least that one video was. But that was back when nobody was making money off of YouTube, really, so he might have, like, moved on to other things. I know a lot of people did, just because at the time you couldn't make money off it, so it wasn't viable to do for, like, a living. So yeah. some people made the choice to, like, go on to other things, which sucks. Uh, fucking Limit Dino was really awesome. Well, I think... I think a lot of the people, like, who were originally on YouTube and, like, doing all that really high-octane stuff, like, eventually moved on to do, like, legit companies and stuff. Some of them did. I know a lot of people did different things. One person, but I can't remember who it is now, like, founded some kind of uh, animation studio, and they do, like, the, uh the in-betweens or whatever. Like, you know, like... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Um, yeah, I know one person, like, founded a company like that, but I don't remember who it is anymore. Then, you know, obviously Eagle Raptor kind of founded, like, his own little, uh, whatever the Game Grumps branding is. That's It's always constantly expanding, too. Like, he's always bringing in new people, yeah. and, like, there's, like, a whole bunch of channels that are, like, associated to Game Grumps. It's, like, its own, like, network now. And, like, obviously they're making, like, full shows and stuff, too. Like, Ross is working on Game of Earth, and they're doing, like, that good game show for YouTube Red. And then they've got the Oni Play Super Mega Game Grumps channel and uh, whatever the hell else they're doing, because I'm sure there's, like, 18 more things. <laughs> on okay. top of running their personal channels, which mostly their personal channels are just Ninja Sex Party stuff and Starbomb stuff anymore. Oh, Kitty Cat Gaming, that's another channel that's under their, like, umbrella. Mm. That's uh, his wife's channel. Yeah. I don't know if Commander Holly's channel is under their umbrella or not, though. I don't think it is. I think it's under its own thing. Oh, well. Well, then. Things just kind of went really quiet really fast for no yeah, apparent kind of reason. kind of ran out of things to say. I was... I had, like, three topics in mind, like, when we started. And I only remembered one of them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, I guess that is the sort of things that happen. Oh, actually, I saw this post on Facebook that was, um about um somebody like posted a picture of themselves burning like a badge like um the furry badges like you know when you oh yeah and like everyone was throwing a big fit about it 
And I was all like, who fucking cares? Because, you know, like, if they pay for it, it's their property. They can burn it if they want. Just fucking deal with it and don't, you know, get, <laughs> sell them art next time, I guess. <laughs> but then apparently, I guess, that it was actually in a, 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 one of the adopt things, which I think is stupid in the first place. Uh, oh, yeah. Where you sell your character, which is dumb because... It's dumb for a multitude of reasons, but... Anyways, it was an adopt thing, and so they got mad at the other person and burned the badge, even though that person had already paid for it. So then I was like, okay, that's understandably more of a thing to be, like, pissy about, I guess. True. Although still, it's not a big enough deal to me to, like, throw a huge fit like that over. <laughs> well, at least it's slightly more understandable than the original position. At least, it, at least it wasn't burning, like, an American flag or a Hulkamania t-shirt. I would burn both of those and then use them as the kennel to burn the badge just to piss everyone off because yeah. I'm like a dick. <laughs> um, but no, for real. What is the deal with adopts? Like, that's such a dumb thing because, one, the whole point is to make your own character and have an original character that was your idea. An adopt is, hey, I made this character, so it's actually unoriginal for you to have or use them. But if you pay me money, you can use them instead of having to actually think for yourself for once, you fucking lazy piece of shit. I don't know. Okay, maybe, <laughs> it's just, maybe it's just... <laughs> Imagine it's for those people that have, like, hundreds of characters. It's just... It's dumb. It's, See, I, why I would always, you do that? I always thought it was just, like, for those people who, like, have no imagination but want to have a character anyway. Yeah, but you can you can come up with a character, like... My character is not even all that original. Like, yeah. in fact, your it's character, a very your character generic, is just you. Yeah, my character is more or less just me. It's not even like that original, but like my character's been like just over time getting more and more involved. Anyways, like uh. I put him in the Castro outfit as a joke, but now I kind of like that look for him. So like I'm keeping that, and whenever I get the new one done, he's still gonna be like in that Castro like style. Nice. And I'm like. So mine's just evolved naturally. It's not even that hard. Even if you just start with something really basic, you can just add little things over time and evolve the character. Yeah. I would just feel weird. Like, I wouldn't even want somebody else's character because I wouldn't know how to use their character. Yeah, I'm, I'm about the same way, but I don't know. Like, I would, like, come up with good reasons as to, like, why to defend adopts, but, you know, the pet rock took off. It feels like... It just feels like a rip-off, like... You're just wasting money. You're throwing money away on adopts. Essentially, yeah. Well, because, like, what I feel is, on top of everything else I just said, you wouldn't actually know how to use that character. Like, the character was made by a certain person. It was meant to be used a specific way. And you're, at best, just kind of guessing how the character would be. And you know anyone who's buying an adopt probably isn't putting that much effort into anything they do, so they're probably just going to reinvent the entire personality. And then at that point, it's definitely like, what's the point? Like I said, the, the pet rock took off, so there's really no questioning it. I would just rather make my own characters at that point, I guess. It feels lazy and uninspired to just buy somebody else's characters. It's like if I was a producer of a television show and instead of, like, making my own characters, I bought Spongebob and Finn from Adventure Time and just put them in a show together. <laughs> It's like, okay, well, now your show's nothing. It's a garbage show, and nobody's even going to watch it to start with. Yeah. Because <laughs> you're just ripping off other people's assets. Even if, I guess, technically in that scenario, they'd be your assets now. That's how I feel about it, anyways. Yeah. Also, that's probably... I wonder how many people that's going to piss off, because, like, I know a lot of people use Adopt, and I probably just pissed off, like, a bajillion people. Eh. Oh, well. I hope I'm not, I hope I'm in the center of the next like great flame for a yes. war where they're all just like going at me like crazy like hardcore over this just because it'd be funny. <laughs> I wouldn't I even know. care. I wouldn't even feel bad about it. Yeah. I just feel like whatever, bring it. I ain't afraid of you. I'm, I'm I'm also sort of in that camp of I don't care who I piss off. I'm just gonna say things and like, you know, be like that. Yeah, I just. I don't want to, like, go out of my way to piss people off either, though. Yeah. Unless, I, there is exceptions, like, with the whole kneeling on the flag there when people get mad about the flag burning thing, and they tell, like, people they can't do that. Like, that's a situation where I'm like, oh, well, now that you said I can't, the only thing I want to do is that. Yes. That's, uh, like, you know, I just, like, in those situations, I guess, I would much prefer to just be like, fuck you. 
And then I'll intentionally piss people off. But that's pretty much the only situation. I don't try to go out of my way to, like, upset people. Because it's kind of a dick thing to do. Yeah. Dear fat people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I forgot that was a video. That, that was a video? Yeah, there was a yeah. video called Dear Fat People. And this girl tries and fails to be funny while making a video about how fat people need to stop complaining about something and they're fat because they're lazy or something. Basically, she just did it so that she could gain views through controversy. Yeah. Uh -huh. She Yeah, she definitely did it for views, but the whole video was her trying to be funny and talking and about how fat people are lazy. But yeah, now you're up to speed. Anyway, what are we moving on to? I don't know. We're moving on up to the east side. No. <laughs> no. Well, no. Oh, yeah. I think, uh, it, was it last, it, it was either last podcast or like the podcast before that, but uh, you were at, like, it, it, there was that one at podcast where like I just rented um, Uncharted The Lost Legacy and Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, and like you asked me how Infinite Warfare was and I answered that I hadn't had a chance to play it. Well, I did have a chance to play it immediately after we finished that podcast. I played like, what, two... Two hours of the campaign and, like, two hours of zombies. Because, of course, there's a zombies mode. I think I can safely say, eh. <laughs> it was boring. It was, the, it was the standard, like, you know, Call of Duty, point and click on enemies, and then just, like, move from cutscene to cutscene. It did do one interesting thing where, like... The gameplay kept seamlessly transitioning between, like, gameplay and cutscene, and, like, the cutscenes load the next area. So, like, there was no loading screens between, like, levels. Which was kind of what Halo 2 did back in the day, which was also pretty cool back when it did it. Speaking, speaking of Halo, like, it, it also, like, ripped off a lot from Halo. Like, I noticed a lot of the ship designs were practically lifted straight from Halo. Wait, isn't this a game that had space terrorists in space? Yes, space terrorists using up all the space natural resources. <laughs> what? <laughs> and then there was the attack on the space Wendy's. <laughs> there was an attack on a space Wendy's. No, no, I made that up. It was a joke. But there was, <laughs> but the space terrorists, like the space terrorists, do show themselves as a le as a legit problem by attacking Earth on the get the entire military together with minimal weapons day. You should have just called them Spacies. Spacies? Yeah. Spacies. <laughs> but yeah, so the campaign... Space Australia. <laughs> so the campaign was kind of the uh, the usual slog of, like, point and click on enemies and go from point to point. You do get a ship hub that you, like, return to after every every so often that, like, just lets you keep, tra keep track of, like, how the plot's going. But that's about it. Zombies mode, on the other hand, is stupid. It's like, I like zombies. I like how stupid zombies can get, but this is like, this is trying too hard to be to be zany and silly and stuff. Though I do gotta give it give it props. I was not expecting the opening cutscene to a zombies level being animated in Flash. Give it props. Give it props. Like it sounded like you were gonna say props at first. Oh yeah, I'm gonna give it corn. Oh god. But yeah, I was not expecting the introductory cutscene to Zombies mode being animated in Flash. Flash animation. It defined an entire generation of internet videos. Yeah. <laughs> oh well. The best ones, too, if you ask me. The best, <laughs> believe me. <laughs> oh, man. That entire era was great. But now, like... YouTube became a business and so like animation stopped being viable because it takes too long to produce. So now it's just a bunch of podcasts and let's plays. Yeah, like we're making. <laughs> it's funny we're critical of podcasts and let's plays, but we're making podcasts and let's plays. It's a it's a necessary evil. It's not just podcasts and let's plays, there's also those crazy zany videos that Rollins is watching. Oh yeah. But yeah, like I'm not really a hundred percent against let's plays. Anyways, and I actually do like podcasts legitimately. Like, I listen to two different podcasts regularly, but the thing is that I feel like a lot of them are very low effort. Like, I like Eagle Raptor and Danny, and I like the Game Grumps, but their videos are pretty much completely untouched, just video. Like, every once in a while, there'll be a slight edit in it, 
And one time they did an actual cut of video, and it was because that actual celebrity kid was there, and he said something that would get him in trouble. Yeah. So they had to cut it out. Rip. Um, and but most of the time they literally just have untouched footage with very minimal editing, and like in that situation, I feel like you should be doing at least a little more. You should at least be, like, cutting out the boring bits. Yeah, at least I'm adding, like, video clips and images and stuff. I'm, like, trying to make it somewhat interesting. Except except for, like, this podcast. But even then, like, this podcast, you're probably going to, like, go through and, like, cut out a lot of the boring, like, not talking parts. Yeah, I'm going to cut out the silent bits and cut out any segment where we're talking about something that's uninteresting or yeah. just kind of low energy. Low energy, low energy Jeb. <laughs> low energy Jeb. Yeah. Please clap. <laughs> need, need, ca- need a caffeine drink. <laughs> Sorry, Mom. Do you think Jeb goes uh, to bed at night sometimes and just dreams that he wins elections? And he's I like, it's so. all for me. It's all mine. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And then wakes up with the bubble bath. Yeah, and he's all like, oh, man. Nobody clapped. <laughs> you know, I kind of... I kind of want Jeb to become president just out of pity. But also not, because it's yeah. Jeb. I mean, he'd probably make a better president than Trump, but... That's not really a high bar. Yeah. I mean, in I fact, mean, I'm pretty sure that bar is just kind of laying in the middle of, like, this, of, of a muddy, like, puddle on the ground. Yeah. No, that's a, that's a bar... The bar is set so low, you they actually had to dig, like, underground to put the bar at its proper place. Oh man, oh, it's like that episode of South Park where um, James Cameron had to get the uh, submarine and go down to the bottom of the ocean to find the bar so that he could manually raise it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was thinking of like one of those like bars for limbo that's like sitting on the ground. Oh man. <laughs> and no one can pass underneath it because it's on the ground. Yeah. But you know, like, honestly, I'd say... I'd say things can't get any worse, but that's kind of what we were all saying in 2016, that's and then we, things got worse. That's what we were saying when Bush came along. We're like, how could it possibly get worse than Bush? And then, <laughs> and then a lot of things happened, and we were like, oh, that's how. How could things <laughs> possibly get worse than Bush? Trump, here, hold my beer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? Well, at least we didn't uh, elect the Zodiac Killer. <laughs> oh, God. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Ted Cruz, he's clearly the Zodiac Killer. So stupid. It's weird that God wanted us to elect the Zodiac Killer, though. Yeah. Also, his prophecies are not very good, apparently, because that one did not come true. What is the election thing? Yeah. Ted Cruz, whenever he was in the primaries, was literally going around saying that God had personally told him that he was going to win. And that was like, it was prophecy. And then he lost, and he didn't just lose, he lost, like, miserably. Like, (laughs) Trump pretty much demolished everyone on the Republican side. He had, like, a super majority of the votes on their side. (laughs) It was just embarrassing. It it really is funny how, like, really the only reason, like, Trump won was because of who he was going up against. Like, on the Republican side, he had, like, fucking Ted Cruz, Jeb Bush, like, a bunch of those other guys... Like, and then on the Democrat side, like, when, when, I, when, like, the primaries were done, his opponent was Hillary Clinton. Yeah. I don't think he would have done nearly as well against Bernie. In fact, I think he would have lost against Bernie Sanders. Oh, I think definitely. Bernie Sanders would have destroyed him. Yeah. Because Bernie Sanders actually stuck to the issues and there wasn't anything to really attack Bernie on. Even now, the only thing they can really attack Bernie on is... Being old. No, they... There's this story that goes around in Republicans' conspiracy land where basically some right-winger that Bernie ran against made up this story about Bernie's wife running some kind of college fraud. What? And they all run around with it like it's the truth even though it's bullshit and they know it's bullshit. Well, this is the same party that, that, like, endorses and is endorsed by National Enquirer, National Examiner, and Globe Magazine. Yeah, that's true. This is the same group of people who still think Hillary Clinton runs a child sex ring out of a pizza shop. (laughs) (laughs) 
it, it doesn't make any sense, but they believe it because they're fucking stupid. <laughs> oh, man. Good old dumbass Trump supporters. The dumbest of the dumb. Well, so much for not being political. But then again, I prefer... I prefer to allow politics when it's when it comes up naturally in conversation. I prefer it too. At first, I just didn't want to stir the pot, especially since we're a small channel. But now, I don't even fucking care. Yeah, it's like whatever, man. We'll pick up whatever audience we end up picking up in the end, <laughs> even if it's none, and we only have twenty <coughs> subscribers forever. Twenty subscribers. Oh, we only have. Oh, seven. hey. It's if like we uh. If we end up only ever reaching like 20 subscribers and we finally decide to end the channel, I'm going to end it with um, a, a Jeb Bush and he's going to be like, please subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> please subscribe. Uh, well, it's like, uh, it's like YouTuber Lord Quadros oh. once said, if like anyone enjoyed making a thing, even if it's just you, then it's worth making. Yeah, that's how I feel like I made the uh, animal video with the rave lights and stuff and Oh god I, It didn't get as popular as I was hoping it would get Because I actually thought it would do at least decently well Like a couple hundred views or something But it ended up just kind of being slightly better than our normal videos <laughs> um, But I don't care because I like that video and it's fun to watch It's hilarious No, yeah. I gotta watch I gotta watch the finished product product sometime. Maybe I'll actually enjoy it. I like it. He thought it was pretty fun. Maybe you'll like it. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. I came into it really early in development, so I don't know. Maybe I just wasn't seeing the whole picture. I did. I did enjoy one, like, little edit that you did where, like, you, like, had this one clip of, like, this dog dancing, and you, like, kind of repeated it so that, I, like, got faster every time. Like, to match, to match in time with the song, and that I thought was pretty interesting. I was just messing with stuff mostly. It was mostly to practice video editing. I wasn't really trying to do anything like spectacular. I messed with a few video editing tools and did a few things and added some fancy lights and cut together some animal clips. It turned out to not be as hard as I thought because all of the animal clips like synced up to the music pretty well on their own <laughs> for some reason. I occasionally had to speed up or slow down a video to make it match a little better, but that was the worst of it. Oh well. Oh god, table spike. Like that? Oh no! <laughs> Earthquake! <laughs> We're all gonna sit here and be fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I was actually in an earthquake once. Were you? I've never yeah. actually been in an earthquake. It What's was an a, earthquake like? It was in California. Like, I, I actually can't. Actually, this is kind of cheating. Like, I was in California, and, like, I was sitting in this sushi shop. Or was it a si No, it was more of a seafood pl seafood place. It was, uh, it was near Anaheim, and, like, Anaheim itself got hit pretty harshly with the earthquake, but I was far enough out that, like, the most I got was, like, a little bit of rumbling, like, some of the stuff in, on the ceiling, like, kind of shook around a little bit, and then it just stopped. Uh, I was getting ready to ask how you cheat on experiencing an earthquake. <laughs> and that's how. <laughs> It was kind of like... <laughs> you put in your earthquake cheat codes. <laughs> yes. I, I put in... Invi up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, A, B, A, B... What is it? No, 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 it's... Up, uh, down... Up, up, down, down, down left, right, left, right, right, B, A, start. B, A, start? Whatever. Somebody has to remember the Konami code. It's just not me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you kind of have to remember the Konami code when, when you, like, suck at fighting the end. You know, I'm almost positive that Kaiba ends up putting in the same code whenever he activates his spell card enemy controller. Well, I mean, Konami does yeah. own uh, Yu-Gi-Oh, Yu -Oh, so it wouldn't be that big of a shock. I think he, I think he does at one point. Like, he doesn't always like, it, like he doesn't always enter in the Konami code, but he does during one of his activations. I think during his duel with Yugi towards the end of Bat, oh, uh, or wait, was it Battle? Yes, towards the end of Battle City. Hey, look, we're talking about card games again. Oh, it's almost like we all like card game shows, at least on some level. Yeah. I like them for the memes and the hilariousness. He likes them legitimately because and he's I, really into card games. And I'm sort of in the middle. And then you're kind of somewhere in between. <laughs> somewhere in the middle. Oh, man. 
if, if I ever, like, got on the Yukio writing staff, I'd totally have a scene written out where it's like, It's over, Yusuke! For I... For my high power monster attacks your low power monster, and you won't have enough life points to survive this attack. Oh god, this is the thing of I have no, to of it's not o it's not over. For I activate my trap card, Jar of Greed, which allows me to draw one card from my deck and add it to my hand. Also, your attack goes through, and I lose this duel. Unless <laughs> the card he draws is a free bow. Ah. Karibo power, activate. Ah oh, man, but if that but if that actually was legit in the anime, you'd know that's what would happen. Like, he'd activate Car Jar of Greed, and by some miraculous chance, pull out Karibo from his deck. Well, yeah, of course, he has to have uh, his shield powers. <laughs> and then he'd, like, survive the attack and then turn it around in one turn. Yep, pretty much. Don't oh, wow. worry, Chrono would do the same thing, only <laughs> with some other bullshit. Like a heel trigger. <laughs> <laughs> that could be worse. Could be Yuya. No. Oh no, like, this card isn't the card I need. Oh wait, now it is. That's Yuma. No. Oh, Yuma. It's so bad on Vanguard that Chrono could take four points of damage somehow with five life to where he only needs one hit to lose and he would draw all four of his heal triggers, they'd all be stacked on top of each other on his deck. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's how badly, like, his character is designed. And Mizu's sitting there, and he's like, yeah, I know, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just waiting for that to actually be a thing that happens at some point in the series. He draws all four of his heal triggers at once. <laughs> he's like, wow, quadruple healing, what luck. <laughs> the only way I can survive this attack is if I draw all four of my heal triggers at once. But there's such a low chance of that. I draw. Heal trigger. Heal trigger. Heal trigger. Oh, draw trigger. Shit. <laughs> Rolls the card off the top of his deck and a heal trigger. <laughs> oh man. I could see it. Oh man, I've been totally picking it up. Speaking of which. We finished the tournament in the Vanguard G series. That's going to sound so good on the mic. You're yes. slurping noises. Yes. It is. That's why I did it. <laughs> <laughs> also because this is a fucking good shake. And mm, Chrono, fuck so good! Yes! Chrono wins, <laughs> Chrono wins the card game with his interdimensional dragon beyond order dragon. So Chrono won? Yep. Oh, Wow. What a shock that Chrono won. <laughs> to be fair, I said that it was going to end with some bullshit, so I was also wrong. But I did call correctly that there was no way he was going to lose to the same person three times. Yeah. I just didn't think they were going to have him win just yet because yeah. of the way you said it. The only thing is that I thought he was going to lose again because we have two episodes left of the current series, season, whatever the heck it is. And then we're starting a new one where the antagonist, or some of the friends of the antagonist are going to be the next antagonist for the next series. Well, I don't know, maybe the next two episodes of Vanguard G are going to be like the uh, the last two episodes of Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds, where like they spend like an entire two episodes on the, en on the epilogue. No, I'd say what's going to happen is they're just going to lead into uh, his friends now that they beat. It's going to be like he beat that villain guy, and now his friends are like, now we, the real villains, are here. And then it's gonna, like, that's gonna be the next two episodes they're about. Or something dumb like that. I don't know exactly how they'll set it up. Probably something similar to what they did in the end of the one version where Shion was, like, gonna punch that guy. And all they were really doing there was trading off, uh... They were taking, um... Uh, how do I explain this? They were taking... Because Shion was up against this one girl this the whole season, but he had moved past her. He needed to go, like, to the next level villain. So to do that, they set him up with this other character who he punched in the face at the end of that season. And at the same time, they passed off that girl to a uh, green-haired girl who's, like, the third member of their team. So, like, basically what they were doing was passing off the girl and then giving Shion, like, a new character to be against in the like last couple episodes of the season. 
Hilariously enough, that new character they ended up putting him up against was like the rival character he ends up having in the first season. But yeah, like the whole point, the whole point was they were basically setting everything up for the next season. Like that was like the whole point of that scene. Yeah, I still have to catch you up on the season that you were in the middle of watching. Were you expecting me to call that, by the way, whenever he punched him in the face? And I was like, they're trading that girl off to what's-her-name, aren't they? And you were like, yes. <laughs> they, you have an uncanny ability of, like, calling... Of, like, pretty much calling the uh, the entire, like, plots of stuff. It's because, like, it's all... It's all, like, in certain patterns, and I'm really good at seeing the patterns. Like, I, there's a lot of stuff that I won't call or that I won't get right. Or, like... And, like, especially when it's very, like, particular and specific information. Like, I I can mess up specifics a lot. But, like, but, he, was, he was right about them passing Shion off to another character. He's wrong who they passed the blue-haired girl off to. Hmm. Nah. From what I've seen, they passed her to, uh... What the fuck is her name, the green-haired girl? Tokuha. Tokuha. Tokuhantis. Tokohantis. Um But whatever. Uh, Tokuha, I guess. Um, they did pass her off to Tokuha, at least temporarily. Maybe they were setting up to like pass her even further off to somebody else, but for that part, for the time being, like her story became part of Tokuha's like, personal arc because she felt personally responsible for that girl going all evil in the first place. Yes, but it's not just like they passed that character specifically up to Tokoha temporarily, but they also passed her idol pop star partner to Tokoha too. Yeah, Luna. Like, the, both of them together were Tokoha's thing. I noticed that. I knew, like, because Tokoha's thing is mostly about Luna, but at the moment, the other girl who's not Luna was, like, the focus because she was the one who was, like, being evil. Although, from what I've seen at the point you're at now... Or, well, not at the point you're at now, but at the point we stopped at. Luna was, like, a fucking death machine with no emotions or something. I don't even fully know what that was about. At the point you left off, they already transferred who Tokoha's big antagonist character she's supposed to be fighting toward the end, it, who it is. Yeah, I'm assuming it was that guy in the car. Which guy? There were three in the car. The one where she takes his keys and he's all like, I promise I'll take care of her whatever that guy yeah i figured although she doesn't take that guy's key she took she takes another guy's keys but that guy from that interaction yeah i figured that's who was the next person in the uh in her story um and now luna's like some kind of god or something i don't know what the fuck is going on with her but she has like superpowers and she can make the monsters real and they'll like fucking destroy like entire buildings and shit. <laughs> so she's like basically the most powerful being in their, their universe right now. <laughs> well, with the exception of Chrono and the main antagonist character. No, because she literally, like, they're in the middle of a card duel and instead of card dueling, she literally summons the monster in real life and it destroys everything. Yeah, but if you <laughs> don't remember, so does Chrono and the main antagonist. No, doesn't, doesn't, like, Chrono just pull up the image of the monster? No, he summons them into the real world at the end of that season. But she does it on command, and Chrono did it one time, and I don't think he can do it anymore. Mm. Especially since all of the monsters that he summoned are locked in a satellite. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, that's correct. All the monsters he summoned are locked in some kind of weird satellite thing. Actually... <laughs> From the way it works, Kronos is actually much better. I'm just saying, like, at the time being, like, all of the monsters he summoned are kind of uh, occupied. So right now yeah, she's well, the most powerful. Yeah, but so are hers. The three characters that can actually summon the units can only summon a specific 12. Mm, oh, are they all the same 12? Yep. So it's and like Zodiac between bullshit. the main antagonist and Chrono, they're the only ones that actually not only summoned the cards to the real world, or to Earth, but they also ended up giving the cards colors, power, a shield, and a grade. That's cool. Um, Whereas all she does was summon the buffalo and have it go on a rampage. 
Yeah, still, that was, that was the most devastation anyone's done in the entire series so far. Yeah, it just makes me think I, more... I, I'm guessing you didn't notice the one where the blue-haired girl ends up summoning the unicorn. No, I didn't see that. I don't remember the unicorn. You don't remember the unicorn? I guess I'm going to show you that one later. But, like, I just know that she, like, went all weird and she was all, like, talking gibberish because they always talk gibberish whenever they're possessed by stuff. It's, like, become its own trope. And, um, then she summoned the thing and it fucked up, like, the entire, like, area they were in and, like, the building collapsed and... Tokaha's brother got hurt and then she blamed herself and felt bad so that one girl from the original uh, Vanguard series who's really weird and likes the red haired guy had to had to be a bitch to her to wake her up make her like stop hating herself <laughs> you're, talking about, you're talking about Rin Hashima from the first season of Jean um, t- is that the girl's name? because I thought Rin no. was the guy there are there are two Rins oh uh. Well, the girl who follows him around and is in love with him does the card fight against Tokaha, and she's being a bitch to her, but she's doing it on purpose because she's trying to, like, get her to snap out of her bullshit. So she's, like, being strategically a bitch instead of just a normal bitch, like she usually is. I'm really good at explaining these shows. (laughs) She's being a strategic bitch. Somebody should make, like, a YouTube channel that's, de- like, devoted to teaching you how to strategically be a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> like, the, like, the strategies of bitchness. <laughs> the most effective ways to bitch and the different styles and, like, how to, like, utilize them to, uh, your best advantages. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, I think you still have about 12 episodes of that season of Vanguard, anyway. Probably. I do enjoy watching uh, all the bullshit that <laughs> transpires in that series. It's it's so it's absurd. Yeah, it's nothing like the first season or the first series. The first series was a little ridiculous too, especially Wolverine. Wolverine was like the funniest character though. I'm I'm definitely glad they kept him and like had him like actually be there because he was definitely a fun character. He he's the comic relief in the anime. Yeah. He's Not much so- better than Brock, although uh Brock is um Brock just looks funny because he looks like Brock. Just to clarify by the way, I'm not actually talking about Pokemon's Brock because Pokemon's Brock is actually a way better character than probably anyone on Vanguard. Yeah, um you're talking I'm talking Team about um Jay. I'm talking about the guy who looks exactly like Brock in the Card Fight Vanguard series. He's like the same haircut, he wears a green shirt, and he's got like the same eyes and everything. You're talking about um, K from Team Trinity Dragon? I think so. I just know it. I, every time I see him, like, I immediately think Brock. Because that's what he looks like. <laughs> he's not even like the comic relief one in their group, is he? He's like. Uh, no, not really. He's just a part of the. He's like comic the friend. He's team. like. He's like the friends of Wolverine and. Uh, like, in the first series, Wolverine had those two friends or whatever who were always, like, with him. Didn't he? Didn't he have, like, some he friends? He had one friend with him. Did he have one friend? I remember he had a friend with him a lot of the time, and his friend, like, pretty much knew that he sucked at the game, but was just, like, supportive anyways. And then they were really into that pop star girl or whatever. Uh, Wolverine was really into the pop star girl. Yeah, but I thought his friend was too... Or no, um, it's, a. Uh blonde hair guy gets dragged along with Wolverine all the time for some reason. Yeah. Miwa. Miwa or whatever. That's what it is. That's what I'm thinking of. That's, he had a friend with him, but it wasn't actually really his friend. It was Kai's friend. And none of them ever were green or look like Brock. So I think you're thinking of Kay from Team Trinity Dragon. No, I was saying he's the equivalent. Oh. Like, yeah, pretty much. Like, Brock is the equivalent in the G series to, like, Wolverine's friend in the original series because he's not the actual comic relief character but he's always following him around yeah he's, um, part, of, he's part of their little team that one idiot guy who's like their leader is probably supposed to be the Wolverine Zuneda. although it seems like he actually knows how to play the card game which is slightly upgrade from Wolverine <laughs> Wolverine doesn't know how to play the game 
these grade these grade one and twos that are useful for me to get to grade three are very weak. So I gotta put them back in the jet and draw more grade threes. <laughs> Remember that time that he gets the manager guy's deck and then he's like wrecking everybody because whenever he has like a well bounced deck, he's actually like the best player <laughs> like by far. What ends up happening is the manager guy ends up having like this new deck on sale and is like, oh, you forgot your deck at home. Why not try this one so you can still enjoy the game on this tournament day thing? <laughs> He, like, wrecks through everybody, too. It was really funny. I think the only character he doesn't end up wrecking is Kai. Well, yeah. But they aren't going to let Kai lose. Not to, not to Wolverine. <laughs> <laughs> Although it would have been funny. It would have been hilarious if he'd, like, literally beaten through the entire Q4 team. <laughs> like, just by... <laughs> just by having, like, a different deck. That's not full of grade threes, only to have him immediately in the next episode switch back to his grade three deck and suck again. <laughs> That's how the ending of that episode is. Yeah, but it'd be even it's funnier that's... if he had like actually beat all of the main characters and then immediately went back to sucking. I think he beats everyone in the card shop but Kai, though. So I think so. It, so it's kind of like that. But yeah, he ends up getting that deck goes home and merges it with his actual deck, comes back to the car shop the next day to challenge the, the main protagonist team, and ends up losing because his deck's an unbalanced mess. Yeah, because he just puts all the grade threes from that deck he liked. And the... <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Because he's so dumb. Chin out chin. We're Wolverine again. He is a pretty decent comic relief character, though. I think that's because of how his character is set up, though. He's a lot of fun. Like, Team Trinity Dragon isn't a, isn't even a decent comic relief team compared to Wolverine. Yeah, they don't even really show up that much, but everything in Card Fight G is inferior to the original series. Well, of course. Even, like, a lot of the characters are just knockoff versions of the characters from, uh, the previous series. Like, um, <coughs> Shion. <coughs> Kaiba. <laughs> yeah, Shion's a knockoff Kai, and Kai's already a knockoff Kaiba. And kind of a knockoff Kaiba. He's that same character type. I know he's not super rich like Kaiba is, but... He's, like, supposed to be, like, that asshole character who, like, deep down inside is, like, still a good person or whatever. Which is what Kaiba is, too. Yeah, I feel like Kai comes off of more of an asshole than he actually is, though. Yeah, Kaiba's just legitimately an asshole. That's the difference in their character, I would say. Kai is, like, someone who comes off as an asshole but really is, like, a good guy. And then Kaiba's just actually an asshole... But at the same time, he'll do the right thing when it's like, like when it's needed of him. Yeah, he'll do the right thing when it's needed of him. But he's definitely actually an asshole. That's not like a persona he puts on. He's just an asshole. <laughs> he's an asshole to everyone except Mokuba. <laughs> uh, and then we have Chrono, the knockoff IG. Yeah. He's not even that. Aichi's just. Aichi's a way better character than Chrono. Well, of course. Aichi's, like, actually not even that bad of a protagonist. He's, like, fairly decent. He's definitely not top protagonist ever created material. Top but 10 he's... best protagonist. No, nah, he's definitely not on that list, but he's a very good, like, well-done protagonist. He's not annoying, really. I actually like, uh, in the original series, uh, I always forget everyone's names because they're with Japanese names and I can't remember them. But uh, the girl, boy or girl, what color is their hair? The girl, the really smart one on their team. Misaki. Misaki, that's it. Yeah. She's like. What's their gender and what color is their hair? She like runs the main shop in the G series or whatever. She runs both shops. But yeah. Um, She's actually like the shop owner. I really liked her character too. 
But I always liked that character type, like the really smart analytical one. Yeah. Which is why I liked Oreo and Bleach. And uh, who else? Who else is a character like that now that I'm trying to think of it? Um, uh, God, shit. I can't remember people's names. <laughs> I want to say Kurama was his name in Yu Hakusho, the fox guy with the uh, rose whip. I guess neither one of you have seen that series, so you wouldn't know. But he was like that character in that series, and he was really cool. Um, there wasn't really a smart character in Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> well, I guess there was Gohan. There, there, there's Bulma. Uh, <laughs> this... Bulma, but she doesn't. She stops mattering after Dragon Ball. There's Gohan, but Gohan's intelligence doesn't really come into play in his fighting at all. He still just kind of runs in and punches everything like everyone else does. Because in Dragon Ball Z, like, you either punch stuff or you lose. <laughs> really? I guess there's Piccolo. Piccolo's kind of strategic, to be fair. So I guess Piccolo's kind of the that character of Dragon Ball Z. Um, what other characters like that are there? I can't think of that many, but... Anyways, it's not important... You've gone quiet over there. No, because you two kept uh, talking on and on about your uh, card game animes and shit. <laughs> yeah, I know. We have a really bad habit of doing that. But I say we should just talk about whatever naturally comes up, because that'll be the best anyways. <laughs> Even if we end up talking about card fighting games forever. Yeah, that's going to be like almost every episode. I'm somehow going to manage to squeeze card game animes into the podcast. That's fine. We'll end up talking about Metal Gear a bunch anyways. Yeah, I, th I think it's basically just, like, easy to assume that, like, when you guys start talking about card game animes, I should just, like, shut up and let you guys talk for, like, the next 30 minutes. I mean, that's basically what I do for the Metal Gear stuff, because I don't know shit about it. Yeah, that's fair. Speaking of which, I don't know when we started talking about card fights, but it is an hour and 20 minutes in now. About an hour and 15, but... <laughs> so we did literally talk about card games for, like, a very long time. <laughs> Like, that's probably a significant portion of our conversation is card game animes. Oh, yep. well. <laughs> I'm not going to complain. I mean, otherwise, I'm, I'm sitting here being quiet on the couch. It's all good. We'll have more things to talk about as time goes on. I, like, I do the you guys haven't... Or... Yeah, you guys haven't seen the Wonder Woman movie yet, and it's bound to come to Redbox soon enough anyways, now that it's actually released on DVD. Yeah. So I definitely intend to have you guys watching it so that we can talk about that later. That, that sounds good. I heard it takes place during World War One, which is like pretty, pretty much one of my... World War Two. Really? The internet lied to me. I'm pretty Who sure would do such a thing? Just, I'm pretty just go sure. on the internet and tell lies. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's World I mean, it was War like II. the entire internet. Or at least a majority. Of Maybe it. it was World War I. I feel like it was World War II though because I was pretty sure she was fighting Nazis. Well, World War One also had Germany as being like the main. Yeah, Axis but power. she wasn't. She wasn't fighting Germ. I, f I felt like she was fighting literal Nazis, and like major. Oh wait, I can't. Yeah, <laughs> I almost. <laughs> you almost let that one slip. I almost did, but I caught myself. Um, Hold your I could there. be wrong though. I could be wrong, and it could be World War One. I, I I felt like it was World War Two though, but I. Definitely could be wrong, because nobody ever said anything about Hitler, so maybe it was... Because I feel like if you were making a World War uh, Two setting, you would have, like pretty much be obligated to at least mention Hitler's name, so... Yeah. I mean, Captain America punched out Hitler. Yeah, so maybe maybe it was World War One, and I'm just wrong. I don't know. We'll have, to, we'll have to give it another look and, like, see for certain. Sounds good. I did almost spoil, like, a major plot point for you. <laughs> Not just... I didn't just, like, almost, um, like, do a minor spoiler. I almost, like, spoiled a major plot point of the, like, entire movie. It's like... <laughs> it's like if I were just to, like, sit down and immediately, like, mention who the main vil Who, like, the real main villain of Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker is. Or something like that. I think just by saying the real main villain, you've spoiled an awful lot. We'll, we'll just bleep out Metal. We'll, we'll just we'll just bleep out Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker. <laughs> Every time I say it. Nah, I say leave it in because you didn't really spoil anything. Plus, I don't think it matters too much. Yeah. 
I mean, it's not like it's not like the main villain actually even shows up in any previous Metal Gear titles, so like you're not going to really have any spoilers on that regard. That's true. Even if you knew who it was, you wouldn't know who they were until you played the game. It's Sandy Squirrel. It yes, is, <laughs> and it's Sandy Cheeks. Sandy Cheeks. Sandy Cheeks. Howdy, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> We've right. got square dancing, peas in a can pie, barbed cues. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> I forgot about that episode. <laughs> What's so great about dumb old stupid Texas? <laughs> what did you just say? <laughs> can we say that people from Texas are dumb? <laughs> Can we say that plants from Texas are dumb? Can we say that shoes from Texas are dumb? Uh, hey Patrick, what am I? Stupid. No, I'm Texas. What's the difference? <laughs> the stars at night are dull and gray and whenever they have to be over dumb old stupid Texas. <laughs> you gotta stop making Spongebob references. Oh my god, I, mean, I fucking Get love. a dog, little long. <laughs> get a dog. I fucking love that episode. It's great. I'm so glad to hear that some of the more modern episodes are starting to get good again and they brought back some of the original writers. I yes. hope we're gonna get like some meme-worthy material like like advanced darkness and stuff. Oh, yeah. Advanced this darkness. isn't just regular darkness. This is... <laughs> Advanced darkness. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Uh, I hope we get like some good old classic SpongeBob moments again. Yes. Uh, it seemed like it was going that way from what I've heard so far, but we'll see. I had thought they'd canceled that too. I'm surprised they haven't canceled Fairly Odd Parents yet. Actually, now I'm thinking about it, because that show's like been dead. It, not even just dead. It's been like super dead for a while now. How, how does one become super dead? Um, whenever you had to have a baby inserted into your show to keep it relevant, but then people got sick of it anyway, so you inserted a dog into the show to keep it relevant, and then people got sick of that, so you inserted a second protagonist into the show, and people are already sick of that, I feel like you've reached the point where maybe you should consider shutting the show down. Yeah. <laughs> Just maybe. <laughs> like, it's on life support right now, and no amount of new characters is going to save it. it it's like time to pull the plug. I don't know why Butch Harmon doesn't just end the show. He's got like a whole nother show running on TV anyways. So like what the fuck does he care? <laughs> uh, he can know. just focus on his tough puppy show or whatever the fuck it is. I blame Nickelodeon executives. And probably. It's probably the same reason they won't let fucking Spongebob die. So then again, apparently not letting Spongebob die is actually like a good thing because now the writers are back. Yeah, well, I mean, that's true. I would love to see classic Spongebob humor with uh, modern Spongebob animation quality. Yes. That would probably end up making some really great stuff. Patrick, can't you go be stupid somewhere else? Uh, 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 Squidward. Remember what Mr. Krabs always says. The money is always right. Your ceiling is right, Squidward. You're not a really good employee. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Just remember, poop. <laughs> poop? People order our patties. Oh, poop! <laughs> what? It's actually a carefully constructed anagram. <laughs> oh my god. This show's so good. It's really good. Did you see that uh, Final Fantasy XIII was uh, the subject of the newest Defend It by The Completionist? Eh, I haven't really watched a whole lot of Completionist lately, but I might. You, you remember what Defend It is, right? Yes, where he like, takes a very unpopular like gaming concept or game itself and like finds ways to say how it's not actually the worst fucking thing in the world. Mm-hmm, no, Final Fantasy XIII was on that list. 
hmm. this time. And I was like, I hate to say this, completionist, but you're fucking wrong. That game is a piece of hot garbage. Well, it is like it. It looks good. It's got good music, and like the plot doesn't completely shit itself until like the third act. Although, if you fucking strangled Hope to death and then dropped him in a ditch, the story would be better. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> He's really annoying. <laughs> but like I said, at least the plot doesn't completely shit itself until the third act. But yeah, um, it's, oh my god, the, the game is just so bad. But then again, that's, lot, that's like saying Sonic 06 works some of the time. Yeah, like, the game, there's so much broken and wrong with Final Fantasy 13. I don't know how anybody likes that game at all. It blows my mind. It should be remembered as the Final Fantasy 2 of the modern era, but instead it's going to be remembered as the Final Fantasy 8 where you either love or hate it. Oh, yeah. And it's, like, really annoying because it's a piece of garbage, but for some reason people actually like it. I guess people just like when they don't have to actually play the game and the game plays itself because then they can just sit there and watch the game, which is well, how else, fun for some people. How I else guess. can you how else can you explain the sudden popularity of choice games? That's true. Maybe just people don't want to actually put in the effort of playing the game and that's why thirteen is popular. <laughs> oh and then the giant hallway was easier on them because they didn't have to actually explore to find stuff. They could just run in a straight line and get to the end of the game faster. The most you, the most exploration you have to do is turn around and look behind you. By the time you finally get to the open world part, you're so fucking burned out on the game and done and sick of it and just fucking irritated that it's not even worth it anymore and you're probably not even going to finish. Hell, I remember Quake. I remember, like, Quake, like... Oh, man, Quake did a... Quake did a good thing with, like, exploring and stuff. Like, you know it's a good thing when, like, selecting your fucking difficulty is a bit of a chore. Like, easy mode, you just gotta walk down a small hallway. Normal mode, you gotta walk down a hallway with a little bit of platforming in it. Hard mode, you have to, like, do a fucking running crouch jump across a lake of lava to actually even select hard mode. Nice. Then, like, if you want to do the really hard, like, nightmare mode, you have to, like, fucking look for a small, like, little, like, easy-to-miss secret in the level select. Like, you gotta, you gotta, like, jump into, like, this, like, small pit, like, land on a, like, wooden plank at the very end of the pit. Like, walk down a small hallway, hit a switch that, like, looks like a normal light in the hallway, then, like, enter a teleporter there, and then you get to select nightmare mode. What would life be like be if it wasn't complicated, man? Why'd you have to go and make this game so complicated? <laughs> so yeah. Afro Laving. <laughs> Afro Laving. Who? Afro Levine. Who? Do, Do you, you not know, know who, who Avril Levine, Levine is, is? Jinx? <laughs> Damn it! I now owe you a coke, a <laughs> cock. You, you now owe me a cock. A cock. <laughs> um Yeah, do you seriously not know who Avril Lavigne is? Who? Oh, yeah, I'll take wow. that as a no. Oh, I know some music we're going to be playing for you later. <laughs> I've heard the song, I don't know who the person is. How do you not know who the person is? Cuz it's the person who did the song. And a lot of other songs. Uh, hold on. I'm, I've got to think of how the songs go now. And that's, I like the song. We I were don't meant to, to be, supposed out. to be, but we lost it. And all of the memories so close to me just fade away. And all this time you were pretending so much for my happy oh, ending. Oh, I know that song too. <laughs> <laughs> She has a bunch of songs from like a very specific era. Oh, I know one that you might know. He was a scareder boy. She oh, said, see you later, <laughs> boy. He wasn't good enough for her. <laughs> it's really clever because she spelled scareder with an eight. <laughs> oh, boy. I actually That's like how you know it's the 90s. I actually really like Avril Lavigne as much as I love making fun of how dumb that is. Uh, 
Oh, uh, okay. Well, I think we've hit our hour and a half mark. It's time to yeah. wrap this bitch up. And then send it off, because it's a motherfucking present to the world. Hooray. <laughs> right, so... I am Blake Fox. Fox. Deal with it. <laughs> I'm Rolling Siston. <laughs> and I am part of Breed. Oh no! That lets you draw two cards from the top of your deck and add them to your hands. <laughs>